Well, you guys obviously liked the last McDonald's stories video I did, so I'm doing another one. Like I mentioned in the last McDonald's video I did, these stories aren't the type to make you sit in your room absolutely terrified. However, they are extremely creepy and odd. Anyways, let's begin. It was about 3 in the morning and I was on my way to my job at my local McDonald's to open with one of my favorite managers there with me. She told me to text her when I got there so that she could let me inside. Once I pulled in, I noticed a man standing outside of his car in the farthest corner of the parking lot. He was shooting me this sort of menacing stare. Let me point out that it's completely pouring outside. I was really confused as to why this guy wasn't just sitting in his car. I then parked and texted my manager to let me inside. Seconds later, I noticed her at the door opening it for me. Upon walking up to her, I say my usual good morning. I was stopped mid-sentence by her rushing me inside and saying, Did you see that guy outside? I told her yes, and she proceeded to help me refill sauces, napkins, and things like that. My manager then told me that she's going to check the security tapes just to make sure that everything during the period that the restaurant was closed was okay. Minutes later, my manager called me into her office for whatever reason. She told me to look at the screen, and it showed that the same man was standing outside. The time was 12.47. She then fast-forwarded the tape to reveal that the man had been standing outside the entire time up until now, and at this point it's about 3.50 a.m. I ran to the front lobby and I noticed him still standing over by his car. I figured or was hoping that he was probably just on something and he was waiting for us to open so that maybe he could get breakfast. I resumed filling sauces again and making sure everything was in working order until I was abruptly interrupted by banging at the front door. I walked over and noticed a figure right outside the front door. It was the man. I yelled that we were closed and that he would have to come back later. That didn't seem to phase him as he continued to bang on the door. I walked away, figuring that he was just being an asshole when suddenly I heard a loud crash. I ran to the lobby to see the glass door broken and the man beginning to step inside. I yelled for my manager and told her that we needed to leave through the back door. And we did just that. We booked it to our cars and both called the cops. They arrived in about 15 minutes and came outside the restaurant with a dirty looking man in cuffs. They said he was hiding in the back janitor's closet with a large knife in his hand. So that's my story and also the reason I'm never working early mornings again. I've been working at McDonald's now for over five years and this is still my creepiest experience there. This happened two years ago when I was 18 and I had been working my first overnight shift on front counter. I usually work in the kitchen on overnights so I had no interactions with any of the customers until then. I was working from 10pm until 6am which is a usual overnight shift for us. Around 3 a.m. I was making some fries when I noticed a man standing there and trying to take pictures with his cell phone of me and my other female co-worker Rebecca. I pointed it out to her and she just rolled her eyes in annoyance and went to take an order on drive through telling me it happened a lot from people. I was instantly uncomfortable. I wanted to tell the manager but he was in the office doing his manager stuff and I really didn't want to bother him. I went over with what felt like a nervous smile and quickly did my usual greeting. Hi, what can I get for you? He just kinda looked at me and stayed quiet. He was about 5'8", white, early 20s, medium build with dark hair and brown eyes. An average man I would say, but something about his piercing glare made me feel super uncomfortable. Then he smiled a smile that sent shivers down my spine. I'll just have a coffee black, sweetie, he said, and I could instantly smell the alcohol on his breath. I nodded and told him the price before he pulled out a $5 bill and went to hand it to me, making sure our hands touched. I avoided his gaze and went to hand back his change when he winked and went to go wait for the coffee. I went to go make it as fast as I could, but just my luck, we were out of coffee on both the front counter and the drive through as we don't sell much through the night. I turned around and kept as little eye contact as I could. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to brew you a fresh pot. 
should only take about three minutes. Don't worry, I don't mind. I have quite the view while I wait. He replied, shooting me a wink, and I just smiled awkwardly and looked away. I had to make sure I didn't fall behind on my shift, so I began to set up the muffins on the display so that we had them all ready for breakfast, which in Canada starts at 4 a.m. So, Susan, I heard from behind me realizing it was the guy. I instantly tensed, wondering how he knew my name before I noticed I had my name tag on and quietly cursed to myself. I turned around and looked at him and he said, So, what time are you stuck here until tonight, beautiful? I instantly panicked as I don't do well in situations like this. I, uh, seven. I said nervously, which then the guy gave me a huge grin. Oh, so you still have time before you're off, eh? I nodded and noticed the coffee was done pouring, so I went over and made his coffee as he watched me with an intense stare. I handed it to him before saying have a nice night, earning me another wink. He then waved and said as he turned around, I'll see you later, Susan. I watched as he walked out the door and tried to calm myself down. He doesn't actually know when I'm off, so I was okay, I thought to myself. 6 a.m. rolled around and it was finally time to go. I still felt a little paranoid about the guy, but knew it was now in the past. My coworker Chris was going to drop me off at home as we carpooled, so we got our stuff together and we left. As we were heading to his car, I noticed a parked car with someone in it. And, of course, it was the guy. I panicked and quickly told Chris that that was the guy as I had told him what had happened not long ago. He instantly brought me into his coat and did his best to keep me hidden as we walked to his car. He made sure no one followed the car, dropped me off, and watched as I went inside, telling me to stay safe. I thanked him before going into my house and going to bed. The next day, I went into work and got asked by my manager how I got home. I told them that Chris gave me a ride home. My manager got this confused look and said something that made my blood run cold. Uh, oh, that's strange because some guy was here looking for you just before seven. He said he was there to pick you up. I thought before that the man's intentions weren't good. Just the way he looked at me and spoke to me like I was prey. And this pretty much confirmed it. Since then, I have refused to work front counter overnight shifts. And we no longer wear our name tags on overnight shifts. This may not be the scariest or most action-packed story ever, but this is seriously one of the creepiest encounters both me and my friend have ever had. So, me and my friends had just seen the new Leonardo DiCaprio movie, The Revenant, a film he deserves an Oscar for, I'd like to add. Anyway, once the movie had finished, my friends Owen and Samuel decided they weren't hungry and then headed home. Now it was only me and my other friend Jake left. We decided to hit the town and get something to eat for dinner. We looked in a few shops on the way, but we weren't really that interested in buying anything. We eventually decided to go to McDonald's. Yes, I know, it's not the best thing to have for dinner, but we were 14 and we weren't fussed about going to a bigger place to eat. After what felt like a lifetime walking down the town, we got to the McDonald's. We went to the bigger two-story McDonald's, as we were in the city center of Edinburgh and everywhere else was busy. Anyway, me and Jake took our food up to the second floor as the first floor was pretty filled up. We sat down in a little section that had about four or five tables in it, only one of which was available. So we sat down at the free table and began to eat. I had just taken a bite out of my food when I looked up and noticed that an old woman sitting alone at the table behind us was staring at me. I dismissed it at first and thought maybe she was looking at the wall behind me. I didn't think much of it, I mean, who would, right? I have a tendency to look around the room I'm in when I'm eating, so my eyes did occasionally look past the woman. When my eyes did pass the woman, however, she, yes, you guessed it, was still staring at me. I didn't know whether or not I should tell Jake about it at this point. He was facing me, so he couldn't see her and I also thought I was being paranoid at first. But at this point, red flags were now definitely going off in my head. 
The woman didn't even have anything in front of her to eat. There was just a coffee cup on her tray, which was clearly empty. She was wearing a bright pink jacket and had a big stain on the right shoulder and dark blue glasses that made her eyes look huge. A few minutes passed and she was still staring at me. But now her eyes were as wide as physically possible, so it's fair to say at this point she was glaring at me. I don't even think she was blinking either, which was really adding to the things that were off about this woman. I tried my best not to lock eyes with her, but it was quite difficult. After another two minutes of the woman staring directly at me, I decided that it was time to tell Jake what was going on, because I was starting to feel uneasy and he was picking up on it. I didn't want her to hear me speaking as our tables were relatively close to each other, so I picked up my phone and texted Jake what was happening. He tried to turn around, making it look like he was just looking around. He noticed her as well and we tried laughing it off, which was working until things got a little weirder. The woman started talking to herself, glaring at me still. From this point on, when I looked in her direction, she would raise her hands to her face and start aggressively whispering to them. And she was spitting everywhere, and when I looked away from her, she dropped her hands back onto her lap and began glaring again, still occasionally saying things to herself. Neither me or Jake could make out what she was saying, but I'm pretty sure I heard her say she was speaking to someone called John. The stares, glares, and whatever you want to call it continued and continued. By this point, I could barely focus on eating and neither could Jake. Now thinking about it, I think she was done with her drink before we even sat down, so why stay so long? She started getting louder with her conversation, but everyone at the tables around us were oblivious to what was happening. The seconds that passed felt like minutes now and she was practically yelling things to herself. When she did, I made clear eye contact with her after this and I swear she said something directly to me in an aggressive whisper, but it was too quiet to make out. I think she said something along the lines of, you mutt, at the end of her sentence. Me and Jake decided to wait this out and just sit until she left. We had long finished our food by this point. Unless she was whispering to her hands, she was still glaring at me. Now with a horrifying grin which made my skin crawl. Is this woman crazy? Or is she just a really socially awkward freak that liked to stare at boys eating? The woman eventually got up. On her way out, she violently threw her handbag at the floor, yelled something at the top of her voice at it, picked it up intensely, and stormed down the stairs out of sight. I had no idea what had just happened, but her face definitely sent shivers down my spine, and her behavior was beyond abnormal. Me and Jake sat there for another few minutes to make sure she had definitely left and not gone to the bathroom or something. Then we practically legged it out of there and we never saw her again. Like I said, not an action-packed story, but just imagine if all of this had happened to you. It would definitely creep you out and make you feel uncomfortable. It certainly made me feel uneasy anyway. Since then, I have never gone to that particular McDonald's at night again. I remember working the night shift the other night at a local McDonald's. I had to fill in for my friend Kiara who called in sick. This night was probably one of the most terrifying nights I have ever worked. It was dead around 11pm and I was asked by the manager to sweep the floors until a customer came in. One customer came in and he looked a bit rough. Bald, long rusty beard, glasses, sandals and just clothes that had stains on them. I go over to the register and say, Hi, can I get you anything? He then said, Yes, can I have a large coffee, please? I take his order, give him his coffee, and tell him to have a wonderful night. He smiles. I go to sweep the floor again, and I see the man is sitting a bit close to where I would be sweeping, which is usually under the tables and just around the floor. When I reached his table, he says, You're very beautiful. I smile and say, Thank you very much. He says, Can I give you a ride home when you get off work? I say no thank you and that I have a ride home. He went from the nice man that I had took the order from to just pure rude. He asks me, What's your schedule? I tell him that I'm not allowed to give that information out, sorry. He takes his coffee and goes back outside. The next night after that, Kiara and I worked together with my other guy friend, Jack. 
I told Kiara about the guy from the night before and she gave me this weird facial expression. Jack comes over to me and says, Hey, is everything okay? I tell him about the guy from the night before and he gave me a look of terror. What he said to me ran chills down my spine. That man called the restaurant earlier and asked about you. Just then, my blood ran cold as I saw the man walk back into the restaurant. Kiara's face went pale and Jack's jaw was dropped. My stomach turned in knots as I said, Hi, can I get you anything tonight? He says, No, but can I take you home? Jack steps out and says, No, she ain't going anywhere with you. Get out of here before I call the cops. The manager got pissed off at Jack for leaving his position at the drive through window while Kiara was frying burgers. Jack agreed to switch positions with me until the morning crew came in. The manager asked me to take the trash outside and I nervously said okay. Jack on the other hand was pissed that the manager even asked me to do that. Jack was nice enough to take it out for me. I stayed inside while Jack took out the trash. Jack comes back in and pulls me to the janitor's closet and says, that guy was waiting for you in his truck with five other big guys in there. I felt sick to my stomach when he said that. Jack informs the manager, and the manager, like the asshole that she was, says, He's not gonna hurt anyone. He's harmless. Get back to work. The next morning, me and Jack worked together, and my other coworker Taylor informed me that the man had came back and told her my schedule, and that he'll wait for me to come back in today. Eventually, he came in. Jack, being the good friend that he was, told him to get the hell out of the restaurant and to never come back again or else he would call the cops. Jack lost his job because of this, but to me he was just looking out for me. I cried so hard when Jack lost his job because I know Kiara and I would be working alone without anyone else there to protect us. But I never saw the man again after that. I quit my job at McDonald's and so did Kiara. Me, Jack, and Kiara now live in the same apartment building and work at a grocery store. I don't know what could have happened to me if I took out the trash that night and not Jack. subscriber stories video soon. I'm just waiting on really good stories, so if you have any, please send them in. Thanks for watching.